On October 30th, Pikeville High School students and staff greeted Mr. Lee Roussan, former NFL running back for the Cleveland Browns and New York Giants. The two-time Super Bowl champion brought a wonderful gift to our students and faculty. We greatly appreciate his work. Now, Mr. Roussan. Thank you for that, that sound of love, I hope. And I hope that you're happy to see me. I mean, I'm, there's two reasons why I'm here today. One reason is to get you out of class. Now, now, you know, when anybody starts to talk sweet to you, you know they want something from you, right? So some of y'all was like, what you want? And I do want something. I want your attention. And I want you to know I am happy to see you because I tell you, it was, it was a journey to get here to Pikeville. Uh, when, I, when I was in Newark, New Jersey, the airport, the, um, the, I, I, before I flew out the airplane, something was wrong with it. They had to put me in an, another airplane. That took a long time, and then when I got to Atlanta, something was wrong with the airplane in Atlanta. And I finally got here like late Monday night, jumping to a, a rental car to drive two and a half hours here to Pikeville from Lexington. Okay, in the dark, I don't even know where I am. Okay, it must be some, it must be some, it must be some type of love here, okay? Then my wife calls me on the phone about 30 minutes into my drive, she goes, honey, the house is on fire. But everything's okay, though. The chimney got caught on fire. My, my, my chimney, um, something happened, excuse me, and the chimney was on fire, and, uh, but they put the fire out, even though like, it was like about a foot from the power line. I'm, I'm thankful that my oldest son was there, and he, the first thing he did when he saw the fire, right, is he went downstairs and turned the power switch off. So, you know, if the fire would have hit that power line, the house wouldn't have blew up. With my two grandsons in it, and my, my uh, 16 year old son named Jesse was a junior in high school. And of course, my, my cutie pie bride, Lisa, who was in the room by herself since I'm in Kentucky. But you know what? It's all good. Because the second reason why I'm here today, other, other than getting you out of class, is to give all y'all in this room, no matter what grade you're in, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, no matter what your name is, no matter what flavor you are, whether you're vanilla, chocolate, <laughs> cappuccino, <laughs> honey. <laughs> strawberry, butter pecan, whatever flavor. <laughs> if you like my quarterback, when I played for the Giants, my quarterback from, who was from Kentucky, his name was Phil Sims, he was, he was vanilla with butterscotch on top, okay? <laughs> I love that brother. Doesn't matter what you want to be when you grow up. It's, you know, here's the second reason why I'm here today is to give all of y'all in this room some real true love. So get ready to get some, okay? <laughs> now I know some of y'all got some thoughts going to your brain cells right now. What kind of love he talking about? <laughs> well, I just turned 51 years old a couple of, a couple of days ago. And I believe that all the years I've been on the planet Earth, I've learned how to spell love. There was one time I did spell love differently than I spell love right now. I used to spell it L-O-V-E. I, I used to be cute sometimes, like everybody spelled it L-U-V. I, I, I spelled it sometimes M-O-N-E-Y. Okay, and then there was other times I spelled it S-E-X. But I learned through my days on the planet, like I, like I just mentioned, that love is not spell any of those ways. I, I learned how to spell love. I spell it V-E-R-B. -E there you go. What's that? What kind of word is that? There you go. Now listen, I think it's awesome, like, if for the first time you feel like you love somebody, right, it's like you start, you feel something deep down here, right, it starts to like, you be like, what's that? Guess what, everybody? It's a feeling. It's an affection. It's not love. You got to take that next step. Love is a choice. It's an action. If you really love somebody, I'm talking about even, even if you love yourself, if you really feel that affection, if you had that thing inside you that you love somebody or something, then you, have, then you need to act in the highest interest of that someone or that something that you love. It's just not lip service. 
I love you. Think about it. If anybody wants to practice, if there's somebody who you, you feel like you love, when you see them later on the day, say, I verb you. <laughs> Some of y'all, it may be your mama, you may, it may be your grandmama, it, 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 may be, it, may, it may be your dog, okay? Just practice. Hopefully, it's yourself. It's, it's all, it's every, every individual in this room, because you really got to learn how to verb yourself. You got to learn how to act in the highest interest of you. So I hope I verb you today. I hope you like, thank you, my chocolate brother from New York. <laughs> I got that verb today. Because other than that, I'm just really wasting your time. You guys are in class, you're in school, moving on with your life. I didn't come in to waste nobody's time. I, I didn't really come in just to give you a speech. I, I, didn't just, I didn't come in just to say, well, let me say what I want to say to these people. There was a song back in the 70s, like, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing. This world has too little love. We got all kind of stuff in this world, man. All kind of things. But where is the love? Maybe your generation is going to show everybody else how to verb, how to love. The struggles you're going through in your lives, that's right. All the struggles, all of you young people in this room going through, all the challenges that you have in front of you, or opportunities to do something no other generation has ever done. I got a couple of presents that I want to just present to everybody today. If anybody wants one, I got an autographed football card. It ain't worth no money. So don't be trying to put it on eBay. If I find out somebody put my card on eBay, we're going to have a problem. I'll do it again. I, I, I'll do it again. I'll I, I, I get on an airplane, and I'll fly back to Lexington, and rent a car, and drive two and a half hours back to Pikeville, and I, I'll have my Rafiki, the baboon uniform on. That Y'all you, you, know Rafiki from the Lion King, right? And I will come in and smack you upside the head. The only value of this, if, 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 of a football card, like my card, that anybody, if anybody wants one, the only true value is that it may help you remember what we talked about today, what took place between us today. If anybody hears something today that you know is real for you, bless you. In other words, if my words are like money, everybody say money. That's right. Now listen, if you guys get some money, I want everybody's room to get some money, okay? Now listen, I ain't going to give you no money today, but I hope you get some money, all right? Now if you get some money, this is what you do. Take it, deposit it into your bank account. Sign the deposit slip, your name on it, with that amount of money that you deposit into your bank account. From that point on, anytime you want to or you need to, you can make a withdrawal. And you can take that money, right, and exchange it for what you need or what you want. I hope my words are like money that you would deposit it deep in your heart today. And when we break out this room, when we go back to our lives, it's always going to be there. And anytime you want to or you need to, you can make a withdrawal. You can take these words and go get and exchange what you need and what you want. Now, you don't have to. You're not born winners. You're not born losers. You're born choosers. And it should be that way. Always be careful, man. Everybody wants to present words to you. People want to tell you all kind of things about life. And sometimes when, when people present things to you, it needs to go through one ear right here and not the other one. When you're looking at TV, you're in conversation with people, somebody come to your school and give you a talk like I'm doing right now, you got to make sure what they're saying is real for you. You got to make sure it's the truth. You got to make sure it's valuable to you. The second present I got for everybody in this room is wrapped up in three words. And you are the only one that can unwrap it. 
I don't care how bad you want your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy, your sister, your brother, your friends, some teacher in the school, if you go to church, uh, your, your pastor, if you play sports, your coach. Again, anybody who you may trust in your life, I don't care how bad you want them to open this present up, they can't do it. Because there's nobody like you on this planet. Out of the seven billion people on this planet, there's no one like you. I'm talking to every individual in this room right now. You got to know this. There's nobody like you. How, how special are you? I, I can't tell you how special you are, but I know this right now. Everybody in this room, no matter what's going on in your life, you're special. And how do I know that? Because a few years ago, I was looking at this one cartoon with, uh, with my son, Jesse, when he was little, called Little Bill. Anybody ever seen Little Bill? Yeah. Little Bill messed me up one day. <laughs> little Bill was like, every time it snows, every snowflake that falls to the ground is different. I was like, oh, that's deep, Little Bill. <laughs> I started meditating on what Little Bill said, right? I was like, wow, every snowflake that falls to the ground is its own. That same week, I flew to California, speaking to these big schools in California. I mean, they had the higher schools, they, they were like, like colleges, right? I mean, they, they had like, they had like five, 6,000 people in the high school. It was, it, was, it was unbelievable. And I'm looking at all these, all these kids, right? I'm like, look at all the love flakes. What's up, love flakes? How y'all doing? Now, you know what? I'm just one person, right, looking at, talking to all of y'all in this room. Now, you know, I can say to you, you know what, there ain't nobody like you. You're special, but do you believe that? Just because I'm saying it don't, don't mean nothing. You got to believe it. Just because my quarterback, whose name was Phil Sims, who went to Moorhead State University, he was from Kentucky, my, 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 my um, vanilla brother with the butterscotch on top. Okay, when I play for the Giants, he would say, huddle up. And imagine like we're in a big huddle right now and I'm Phil Sims. And, and I'm in the audience with you guys with all my other teammates. And he would say something like this. He would go, flow 36 on two. Flow 36 on two. Are you ready? What he was saying is, do you believe? Do you agree with this play? Are you committed? Do you trust your teammates? Do you trust your own abilities and talents that's in your heart? Do you agree with this play, this word right here? Are you, are you ready? Ain't you know what everybody in the huddle would do? We would do this. We would go, break! That wasn't some kind of football ritual. That's communication. We were saying, I hear you. I believe. I agree. I'm committed. I trust. Let's come out the huddle right now, and let's go, go, get it, get it. Can anybody say, go, go, get it, get it? Because ain't nobody going to give it to you. As a matter of fact, young people, and I'm not telling you something you don't know. In the game of life, there's something always trying to stop you from getting what's waiting for you. There's something in our lives every day trying to stop us. You could be going through something in your house, in your home, with your, with your parents, with some of your friends, in this school. Even when you're playing sports, you have an opponents trying to stop you from reaching your goals. There's always something trying to stop you in this life. And you got to know it's not going to be given to you. You got to go get it. And I really believe that if as, as anyone would receive a, a gift for their birthday, something that you didn't pay for, but somebody who, care, who cares about you, they, they thought about something that you may want, right, that you may like, and so they got it for you. They wrapped it up, and all you had to do was open it up. Or maybe it's Christmas, right? Or some special occasion. And somebody who really cares about you got this present, they spent money, they spent time, they wrapped it up, and all you got to do is open it up. All you get is receive it. That's the gift that I want to present to everybody here right now, wrapped up in three words. And you cannot open up this present with your hands. 
It's not a physical gift. The only way that you can open up this present is with the ear of your heart. I know my time is short here, everybody, so I'm just going to tell you what you're looking at if you can't really see it. But if anybody, if you're doubting your chocolate brother right now, if you're like, what you talking about, man? Some, there's an ear in my heart. Well, let me prove it to you right now. Look. Can you see that ear? Who said no? <laughs> huh? Can you see it now? You guys see it now? All right, can you also see the, see the word here? Can you see here? Do you know? Listen, everybody, just right quick. I'm just trying to encourage everybody in this room, as, as all of y'all growing up, look at you. Ain't nobody in baby diapers up in here. Look at you. Young women and young men growing up, getting big, changing, going through all kinds of things. Listen, everybody, just learn as you're growing up, learn how to hear with the ear of your heart what's real for you. Not what's counterfeit, not what's fake, not what's false. Because again, you're not born winners, you're not born losers, you're born choosers for a reason. Because all kinds of things are presented to you every day. Some things look like the real thing. They act like they your real friend. It looks like real money, but it's counterfeit. There's not, there's not a such thing as a counterfeit $3 bill in America. Why? Why not? Because it's not a real one. There's nothing in this life, in this world, that's, that's originally counterfeit, fake or false. The only reason why anything is fake false or counterfeit is only because there's something that's real. And all kind of things in life will be presented to every last one of us in this room like it's real, right? Just to get from you what they want to get from you. Relationships, your business, your soul, your life, everything. I'm just saying right now, Learn how to hear with the ear of your heart what's real for you. And if you do this, one more word in the heart. Can anybody see it at the end? All right, there you go. Everybody say, get your art on. That's right. Now you know how to art. Because whatever, whatever you allow to go into your heart, that's what you're going to art. What kind of face is this? I know it's my face. Okay, that's one way to describe it. What's it, what's it called, though? It starts with a G. That's right. Everybody say game face. That's right. This is a game face. A game face says I'm ready. I prepared everything in my heart, everything that's in me that I worked hard for before the game, before I step on the playing field, that's what's going to come out. I'm ready. That's why you guys are in school. That's why you're in relationships. That's why every last one of you in this room struggle. You go through all kinds of things because it's getting you ready. You guys have your game faces on before that math test? How about that English test? You got your game face on? How about that science test? How about when you deal with your parents? Yeah. Well, you know what? I didn't hear enough yes. So you know what? I know why I'm here. I know why I left my house in New Jersey to come here to Pikeville, to get you guys game ready. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to count to three, and I want to see everybody's game face. One, two, three. Y'all funny.
Okay, everybody, here, here we go. What, how much time I got, brother? Two o'clock right now? I got 2.30 right <clears throat> okay, without any further ado, here's the present I want to present to everybody in this room. And again, you don't have to open it up. I hope that you do. Again, it's your choice. Remember, the only way that you can open it up is with the ear of your heart. You've got to hear it deep down inside. So here it is. Who are you? Do you know that's the number one used line in a Hollywood movie? I'm telling you right now, in every movie, right in the middle of the drama, right, somebody rolls up on somebody and they go, who are you? It's like any time there's a crisis, right, in life, any, any, any time something, right, has to change or, or something needs to happen in our lives, whatever, I'm telling you, that question always comes up. Who are you? It's like you got to identify yourself. Because in that time, you got to get in touch with the real you. You got to come with it. Let's go. It's the number one used line in a Hollywood movie. And it's really funny that most people who act in Hollywood, they're not even being who they are. They're, they're being somebody else just to get paid money. And they're, they're not even being who they are. They're just they're actors, actresses, actors, and, and they, they're making a whole lot of money. But that question... That line, who are you, is the number one line in a Hollywood movie. Now look back at my life. Looking at all you young people in this room, when I was in the seventh grade, we got seventh graders here? Eighth grade, ninth grade, where's the tenth graders at? All right, how about eleventh graders? Twelfth grade, seniors. As I look at, all, as, as look at all that time, listen, let, let's, let's go back to when I was in the eighth grade. If somebody would have walked up to me and said, who are you? I think I would have said, I'm black. <laughs> I mean, I tried to walk black, talk black, dress black, smell black, I was black, black. See, y'all laughing because y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, most of the people around me growing up in the 60s and 70s in Greensboro, North Carolina, most of the black people, most of the white people, most of the adults, most of the young people my age, they were like, man, you better be black. How they talked to me, how they re reacted to me, the, the conversations we had. I remember. But when I was a junior in high school, I wasn't black anymore. If somebody would have walked up to me and said, excuse me, brother, who are you? As a junior, I would have said, man, I'm Lee Roussan. Don't you know? Don't you know I'm one of the top recruited running backs in America? I'm flying on airplanes to Los Angeles. Southern Cal wants me. Colorado, Notre Dame, Pitt, Alabama, everybody. I got it going on. I go to restaurants, my money's no good. I don't have to pay for anything. My, they want to get my parents houses and cars and all kind of stuff. I'm famous. I'm going to be rich one day. I'm Lee Roussan, don't you know? This is amazing, young people. I go from being black, right, to being a name, to being a reputation. But the common thing in both of those identities, it was other people outside of me telling me who I was. But again, nobody came to my school like I'm at your school right now. Nobody ever got in my face and presented those words to me saying, who do you say that you are? No one ever said those words to me. So I was caught up in being defined by everybody all around me. So I signed my name, Lee Roussan, on the contract to go to the University of Colorado. It was so much pressure and so much stress. I mean, what, what choice do I make? What school do I go to? Do I, do I go to Southern Cal? Do I, do I stay home and go to North Carolina or, or Wake Forest or North Carolina State so my family can see me play? Do I go to University of Pitt because I really like the coach? What, which one of these schools am I going to go to? 
What choice am I going to make? Well, I gave, I, gave in to, I gave in to some pressure. I believe I gave in to the pressure of the head coach at Colorado. And so I decided in my heart, I'm going to go to Colorado. I'm going to be a Buffalo. And at that point, I, I felt like all, most of the pressure was gone, right? And I started singing this song. I'm going to Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get a bow ring on my finger. I'm going to become the Heisman Trophy winner. All American, I'm going to party, party, party at Colorado. I mean, I was, ex I, was, I was excited. I was so fired up. I'm like, yeah, baby. I'm going 2,000 miles away from home. I'm out of here. I'm going to live the American dream. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to get my degree, and I'm going to the NFL. Three days after I signed my name on the contract, guess what happened? On ABC, CBS and NBC, the headline story read like this. The University of Colorado has just been put on probation. You're right, brother. I didn't even know Colorado was being investigated. No one told me that Colorado was under investigation. They just told me what they wanted me to hear. Oh, Lee, we love you. You come to Colorado, you're going to be our starting running back. Oh, we love you, Lee. You come to Colorado, you're going to have steak and shrimp for dinner every night. Oh, we love you, Lee. Listen, Colorado is the third leading school in college football pumping out ball players into the NFL. And the NFL stands for the National Football League. You come here, you're going to have a great chance of becoming a pro footballer. But they never said, Lee, we verb you. We want to act in your highest interest by letting you know that we're under investigation by the NCAA. And if you come to Colorado, none of, the, none of those dreams, none of those aspirations or those goals that you were singing in that song are going to come true. That's right. You're not going to live the American dream. You're going to live the American nightmare. So, you know, because we verb you, Lee, don't come to Colorado. Go to Southern Cal. They're pumping out Heisman Trophy winners right now. Or once you go to Pitt, because you really like the coach. Or maybe you should go to school in North Carolina. Or go to a school somewhere near North Carolina so your family and your friends can come and see you play on Saturdays. But don't come to Colorado. Because if you come here, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be the way you want it. We verb you. We just want to act in your highest interest. This world is not like that, everybody. We're just gonna keep it real. That's why I'm telling you right now, you got to know who you are. Because just like the consequences of choices that I was facing, I didn't do anything wrong, but a ball player who went to Colorado in 1967, this is like 1980 right now. In 1967, he took money illegally up under the table, and because of that, Colorado was being investigated, and because of the consequence of that choice, I had to deal with it. Even though I didn't do anything wrong, but since I'm at Colorado, I committed myself, I chose to become a football player at Colorado, I had to, to deal and face the consequences of choices that other people made. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Are you dealing with consequences of choices that other people made, made all around you? Huh? Huh? You know it. Bless you. And are you dealing with consequences of choices that you made? Huh? That's one reason why, again, I'm telling you, everybody, you got to make that decision. Discover, decide who you truly are. Because it's the one thing in your life, it's the one gift that can help you overcome all the things that's trying to stop you in this life. It can give you strength. It can be your GPS to navigate you through this life. When you're going through stuff, when things may seem to catch you by surprise, well, I didn't know that was going to happen. Somebody just stabs you in the back, do you wrong, hurts you like crazy. It's like in football, you're playing football, you know, you're getting off, you're running, boop, 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 boop. Bam! Oh, injury. And guess what I got to do? If I get injured, what do I have to do? I got to get healed up. My son, Jesse, for the first time, he got a concussion Friday night. All he did was Saturday, Sunday, yesterday, Monday, and today was just get rest because he has to get healed up. 
like if you play sports, right, and you, and you know you, you're injured, right, everybody knows that you, you, you hurt the knee or your ankle, you know you're injured, so you know you gotta get healed up. But do you know that you're injured when you live in the game of life? All of us in this room, going through the things we're going through, do you know that you're injured? Just like a football player? And you gotta get healed up? And the part of healing everybody, this is really, really tough right here, it's, it's forgiveness. Everybody say forgiveness. See, that's hard to say, isn't it? Huh? Let's keep it real. That's hard, man, to forgive somebody, man, who didn't hurt you. And then for you to ask for somebody who you didn't hurt to forgive you. That's one of the biggest areas of, forgi of, of healing is forgiveness. It's tough. But I believe when anybody decides their true identity, when they come to that place where they know who they are, you're going to recognize that you locked down. It's like if I was in a, if I was in a prison right now, and, and, and I'm starting my talk, and all of you kids right here are locked up in prison, the first thing I will say is this, does anybody in, the, in here want to be free? And everybody would be like, You know why? Because those kids will know they're locked up. They know they're in prison. But do you know there may be some things in this life are locking you up? And you gotta be free. Do you wanna be free? So you can move on with your life and go get what's waiting for you. I made it to my last year at the University of Colorado. And it was a miracle, everybody, I'm telling you right now, because most of the ball players that went to Colorado at the same time I did, facing the same situation that I was facing, dealing with the consequences of the choices somebody else made. And then I started making bad choices because I was all hurt and I was, I was all mad and angry and, and all the kind of stuff that was going on in my life. So I started making all kinds of bad choices. And I'm dealing with the doggone consequences that I made not being healed up, but I, but I tell you, I'm just grateful that I didn't draw back. I didn't, I didn't quit. I didn't give up. Everybody say, never give up. I hope you just don't say it. The number one killer in America amongst teenagers your age right now in America is suicide. Because a lot of kids are just giving up. And I believe they're giving up because they have no idea who they truly are. They're trying to be somebody who they're not. And under the pressure and all the stress, if everybody all around you is trying to tell you who you are, you're choosing an identity that comes from someplace else and not from deep in your own heart. I believe that your generation can do some things that no other generation has ever done. And because of that, your lives are at risk because you may be the greatest generation ever in this country. You can do some things that no other generation has ever done, like know who you are and show everybody how to verb. I didn't quit, I didn't draw back. I didn't give up and it wasn't easy. I'm gonna tell you something on young people. There was a couple of times I came that close to giving up. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Two weeks before Christmas, my senior year, after my last football season over with, my telephone rings, I pick it up. Hello, this Lee Roussan? Yes, who's this? Well, my name is Don Ferro. I'm the athletic director at the University of Missouri. And I also serve as the head of the committee for the Blue Gray All-Star Football Classic that's played every year on Christmas Day. Listen, Lee, you weren't chosen as one of the best football players in college to be in this game. But every year I get to pick one ball player that everybody else overlooked. And I picked you, Lee. Listen, Lee, you didn't have one 1,000-yard season as a running back. You went on magazine covers. When people say your name, Lee Roussan, the response is, Lee who? 
Believe, I've been looking at your character. Everybody say character. I've been looking at your character, Lee, and I know you got what it takes. All the things that happened at Colorado, you weren't responsible for that, but you never gave up, Lee. I know you got it, and I got an airplane ticket waiting for you at the Denver airport. I want you to pick it up on this date. I want you to fly to Montgomery, Alabama. I want you to get ready during the week, and when that game comes on Christmas Day, when you step on that field, show your stuff. There's going to be all kind of NFL scouts looking for hearts that got the right stuff in it. I got that airplane ticket. I mean, I, I felt like I was in a Rocky movie. Then, 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 boom, boom, boom. Then, then, boom. I mean, I was like, man, I got one more chance. First day was media day. All the media were talking to all the football players about their past and about their future. And I'm waiting my turn for somebody to ask me about my past. Like, what school did you go to? What happened at Colorado? And I would have been, been able to like get my anger out, right? And my, some of my pain and my hurt. And let everybody know, my, you know what, I got, what I feel about it, okay? Or somebody might have said, well, who do you want to play for? Who do you want to draft you? And I would have been able to let, you know, I, I would have said, I don't care. I'm not a football fan. I don't have a favorite football, pro football team. I'm a football player. I'll play for anybody. But nobody asked me about my past or about my future. And let me tell you something, all that anger and the hurt and the pain and the bitterness and all the stuff that was in my heart that just went into my heart from, from so many years of living this life, and especially not knowing who I was, it just visited me. And if somebody would have came up to me in that moment and said, excuse me, excuse me, sir, excuse me, who are you? If I was real, if I was honest, I would have said, I'm just a human being with fear as my identity. Let me spell fear off everybody, F E. A R. Let me, let me give you an acronym to try to communicate what I'm trying to say here. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Fear is not being nervous or being anxious. To me, that's a God given emotion. When you get nervous before a test, before an athletic event, dealing in a situation in a relationship, maybe some kind of crisis in life, you need to be nervous, right? emotionally so you can rise up to the occasion and do what you got to do. But fear is a spirit. It's not an emotion. It's a spirit that will paralyze you. You see, the false evidence that appeared real to me, that because of my past, everything that happened to me at Colorado or the things that did not happen to me at Colorado was the reason why I was not going to make it into the NFL. And in that moment, I was ready to quit. I was ready to go home and see if my mama still had my bedroom ready for me. But there was an announcement, time to go on the bus, go to football practice. And, I, and again, in that moment, I didn't quit. I just, I just, I fought through it. I fought everybody, got on the bus. For the first time in my life, I realized I had no idea who I was. Because I began to judge the football players at the back of the bus. I was like, man, look at all these football players at the back of the bus who think they're better than me because I was listening to their conversations, right? And they were talking about, yeah, this team gonna draft me. They came to my school and ran me and, and they, they, they called me on the phone three times and, and blah, 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 blah. And so I'm like, man, they don't even know what's going on. They don't even, don't even know who they are. For the first time in my life, it hit me like a ton of bricks that I didn't know who I was. I went to football practice, I came back, I sat at the front of the bus and I will never forget for the rest of my life what happened. There was this football player sitting beside me, and he was just different than all the football players on the bus, on the back of the bus, acting like they were cool, had, like having a mask on their face. So when I looked at this brother's face, right, his face was transparent. I could sense something about who this brother was. I could sense a real power, a real confidence. I was like, excuse me, brother, who are you? And the brother looks at me, like the brother looking at me right now, and I will never forget for the rest of my life the words that came out of his heart, through his chest, and out of his mouth. He said, I am the best wide receiver in the NFL. My name is Jerry Rice. I'm from Mississippi. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> I ain't never heard nobody talk like that. Normally you ask somebody who they are, right? The response is pe people's name, right? I'm John Robinson. I'm Shaniqua Williams. I'm a girl. 
I'm a boy. I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm a hustler, baby. I am a pimp. I'm lazy. There's all kind of ways we define ourselves by how our bodies look, how much money we have, how much money we don't have, our reputations. But when I asked that brother, I said, who are you? He didn't say his name. He didn't say I'm Jerry Rice. He didn't say his nationality. He didn't say I'm chocolate, I'm black, or I'm African-American. He didn't say his occupation. He didn't say I'm a football player. He said, I am the best wide receiver in the NFL, and we were not in the NFL yet. The NFL was draft was four months later, and when those four months came, he's drafted by the San Francisco 49ers, and it was a miracle, everybody. I was drafted by the New York football giants. We began to play each other every year, and I became a Jerry Rice witness. If somebody would take me to court and put me in the stand and say, how could this guy be the best wide receiver in the NFL when he wasn't in the NFL yet. And, and my witness account, I would, this would be with my response on the witness stand. I would say, because he decided who he was before he was. He made a decision in his heart. And then he became it. Can you imagine Jerry Rice in the fourth grade? Let me be Jerry Rice in the fourth grade. I'm the best wide receiver in the NFL. And every day, I'm going to walk that walk. I'm going to talk that talk. I'm going to live it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be it. And nothing and nobody is going to stop me. Now, you may look at me like I'm a snot in those fourth grader. Stop judging me by what you see on the outside. As a matter of fact, you're not seeing me anyway. You're hearing me. Because who I am is a choice that I made in my heart. All you're looking at right here is just my human uniform. But who I am is in me. It's a choice that I made that nobody can take from me. I am the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. I'm just going to be coming every day. No matter what comes at me and tries to stop me, tries to steal my dreams, tries to rob me, tries to kill me, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to let it happen because I already made my choice already. Who are you? Have you decided who you are? I'm not trying to put any pressure on anybody in this room. Like the first thing I said was, I hope that everybody in this room will recognize your need to know who you truly are. Some of you in this room have decided who you are. I know some of you have. And some of you forgot about it because you've been going through things. You're just like Simba the Lion King. Because you remember when Simba was a little cat? His father told me, he said, yo, son, you're the soon to become king. And he got all fired up. He went back to the hood to go tell all of his friends. And they started that party line. I just can't wait to be king. I just can't wait to be king. I'm going to be the king. Ow. And everybody was like, you the king. He's the king. I'm telling you, everybody. When you decide who you are, when you know who everybody else knows around you too. Now, some people might not like it. Some people are coming to you and man, who you think you are? You know better than me. I've been knowing you since nursery school. Why are you trying to, why are you trying to respect people? Why are you trying to do this for? You, ain't, you, you know you're from Pikeville. You ain't going to never get ahead in this world. Why you think you this and you think you that? Listen, everybody, you got to translate that kind of language. I've been, in, I've been in Asia, Africa, South America, all over this world, and the people don't all speak English, and I have a translator, right? I come and I say something to somebody, and that translator will tell the people um, what I said in English in their language. And so what you got to do is you got to be your own translator. When somebody come at you and start talking like that, you got to translate what they're saying. What they're saying is that, you know what? I wish I knew who you, I was like you. Because every time I see you, it seems like you know who you are. You overcome things. I just quit easily. I wish I knew who I was. Can you help me, please? Too many of us got too much pride to say that. So a lot of times we, we start talking about people and dogging them and all that kind of stuff. You got to translate that speech, young people, and move on with your life.
This ain't about no pro football player named Jerry Rice or if you saw him on Dancing with the Stars. This is a real life story that happened in my life. And if you can hear anything I said about this story, I hope that you heard it today. I got off the subway train in, in Manhattan. I don't know if anybody in this room been in New York City before. But I got off of a subway, and this dude must have saw one of my Super Bowl rings on my finger, must have went bling bling to him. And so he shouts out, this is in New York City. Out loud, he goes, who are you? Now, I'm going to tell you, this don't happen in New York, but everybody, I mean, all the people around were all nosy. Normally in New York City, people don't even care. There's something going on. They just keep on walking, go about their life. But when this brother said, who are you? Everybody was like. So I said, brother, I am a child of the king. I'm not talking about Michael Jackson or Elvis. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about a relationship. And that's my choice. When the ear of my heart heard of the gift of life that he presents to the whole human race, I'll open up that gift. Now I'm free. I'm free from the consequences of all kinds of choices that I've made in my life and other people all around me before me have made. I'm free to move on with my life. I'm free to love my wife. She's the only woman I make love to. Physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. I'm free. Not because I'm somebody special, even though I am special like every last one of you are special, but because I know who I am. And I'm free to love my children. My oldest daughter, Uchenna, was just arrested on two felony counts. She had prescription drugs in her pocketbook and some fake marijuana. Because she hasn't decided who she is yet. She's running from deciding her true identity. And she knows better. I saw her the other day. I came home from lunch. She didn't expect I was going to be home. She came to, to my house to get some of her personal things because she's not living with us anymore. I don't even know where she is. She didn't expect to see me. And when she saw me, she was like, she, she like froze. I said, I verb you, baby. I verb you. No matter what you do, no matter what you don't do, I can't love you anymore. I can't love you any less. I, I love you. When are you going to come home? And that was it. I went back to school. I didn't have a lecture for her. She knows. It's her choice. My friends, I tell my friends the truth, even, even though the truth hurts sometimes. You know why the truth hurts? Because the truth, if you got a friend, right, you're in a friendship, when you tell your friends the truth, the truth is getting rid of mess that's in your friend's heart that don't belong there. That's why it hurts. And the only reason why I'm like that, again, is because I know who I am. I want to thank every last one of you in this room for sitting in these seats, listening to me, run my mouth for this last hour or so, whatever it is. Thank you so much for your love and respect. You guys have shown me a lot of love by just looking me in my eyes. I'll try to look at everybody's eyes just for a second out throughout this whole talk. Even though we're not we're probably never going to get to know each other personally, thank you for letting me speak into your heart these last few minutes. And if you found something real, if you heard anything with the ear of your heart, I want you to write it down in that card that you got right now. And I want you to sign your name on there. Meaning that I'm making, I'm, making, I'm making it a deposit right now. I heard something that was with the ear of my heart today that my chakra brother said, right? I heard something with my, my, my chakra brother Lee Roussan, okay, said, and I'm signing my name just like if I got the deposit slip in the bank, I'm putting this money in the bank, I'm depositing this money in the bank, and anytime I want to, I can make a withdrawal. Is there anything today that you heard with the ear of your heart? Please write it down. I'm not going to be, if, when I go over, when I read it, I'm not going to be able to put what you write down with your face. It's not for me. It's for you to write down if you heard something with the ear of your heart today. And if you don't want to write anything down, that's fine. This is not something that's mandatory. And you can write anything down that you want to write down. Believe me, I get all kinds of responses. No matter what you write down, it's not going to define who I am. I know who I am. And I hope that, that every last one of you in this room, that you will know in your life. I'm going to say one more thing and I'm going to shut up and let you guys go. There's a suffix. 
spelled C-I-D-E, side, it means to kill. And you know when you put words in front of a, a suffix which has that, that meaning, it gives the specific meaning of that suffix to that, that beginning word. So like homicide means to kill somebody, right? Suicide means to kill. Pesticide or, or, or uh, insecticide means to kill. That's right, rats or roaches, right? But young people, when you decide who you truly are, you kill who you're not. and you're free to move on with this life, to move forward, and go get everything that's waiting for you, and live this life that's waiting for you. Again, thanks for your love and respect. Bless you. If you enjoyed Mr. Rusan's message, you can follow the organization Sports World Incorporated at Facebook and Twitter. The Twitter handle is at Sports World Incorporated. That's at Sports World INC. And on Facebook, you can find them at Sports World Incorporated.